Hey, composing gloves here, and today I'm going to show you how to make this Skrillex screech bass from Make It Burn Damn. You know, the one where they light people on fire? Just kidding. I, I haven't really paid attention to the music video. But anyways, we're going to make the one, the Bernie, the Bernie bass. Not the political one, the Bernie bass. So, okay, so here is the original. And here is what I got. That's the first... That's the second attempt, actually. Here's the first attempt, which is, you know, they're just, they're slightly different. So you can see, I, now I went in and added piano and some drums, just to, just to give myself a better feel for what I was going for. And I even wrote out the same rhythm. In case you're wondering, this is the rhythm. He starts on F sharp, and he goes down, and he jumps down a fourth, and does the same thing with a little, a little dutzabatsa right there. So, okay. Now I'm gonna tell you right now. I'm gonna show you what this patch does, and then we're gonna make the patch. And then, uh, if you don't, I have a lot of series on how to do things like this. So, massive from the ground up. In case you're lost and want to know what these things do in more detail, I have a whole series teaching people how to use massive. And I've got series for like sound design, sound synth basics, digital audio basics. All these things sort of compile into the ability to be able to make sounds like this. So you're gonna want to go through those in case you're curious. Now another thing, uh, real quick. Uh, once you let's talk about this. Let's talk about this patch. So, da da da. This patch has once you've created it you can pretty much choose whatever waveforms you want like okay now that's not totally true but the thing about working in massives they have all these tables and it's sort of like black magic trying to get the exact same setting someone else had but the process of distortion often takes the gap and puts them closer together so for example i have speech going right now so here's my sound by itself let me turn the piano off so here it is and now let me change the waveform of the speech. Carbon sounds pretty close. That one's, that one's pretty far off. But as you can see, the, the general idea here is create a distortion profile based off it. I settled on speech as a thing I thought that was the closest. On the other one, what I said on speech again, I believe I tried out dis, distortion, distro, what is this one? Dish, distro, distro, whatever, however you say that. I wonder what it stands for. Distortion, probably. So I settled on that one on one of them. But I thought speech got closer. You get this also clicky sound when you're doing it. There's a number of ways I can think to eliminate this, but I didn't really implement any of them. So if it bothers you, you're just going to... One of the ways is you just record it and then go through and create a volume envelope that notches out the clicks. Really small envelopes. That's the most tedious way, but if you want something like this, because it sounds like he fades his in more, you could try messing with the main envelope or whatever jazz, you know, it's up to you. So anyways, the moral of the story is this sound is based on distortion mostly in the scream filter, which is something, you know, he really had a relationship with this. Maybe he likes screaming. He really likes screaming. I don't even know. He was in a, a scream band or something, some sort of a band thing. So... Maybe that's why he likes filters named Scream. Maybe it like attracted him. So okay, oscillator one is a is speech and oscillator two. Now let's make a couple observations about our sound real quick. First, if I ooh won't let me blow it up. There we go. So we see here we've got this like we got two spreads. We have this one down here, this main this main harmonic which is all by itself. This hints that it's probably a sine wave. I don't really detect a harmonic series here. I don't see like a saw wave or a square wave. It looks just like a mess wave. So, like, did someone just put this bass in the microwave and it put it on like 20 minutes? So, here we've got this like mess up here, and there's this gap. This means that there's gonna be an octave gap. So, based off these observations, I was like, all right, dog bro, dude, I'm gonna put one an octave up, and I'm gonna put one two octaves down. And the one down, it doesn't, looks like it's all by itself, just this lonesome wave. So, I'm gonna put it as a sine wave. And so, that's what I went with. Now, once you have that, you sort of fiddle with the intensity, you know, whatever the jazz you want to do with that kind of stuff. And I send it both to filter one to the scream filter. I have this annoying click. It's still there, by the way. You can, you can hear go, all right, like this clicky thing. When we make it, it'll be even more obvious. But in order to get rid of it, I attempted to use an envelope to move it out of the movement. Because if I move this down, it's, well, it's still there pretty bad. And what's causing it is the distortion. And I could try putting envelopes down here to eliminate that, but then that takes away from the timbre. And once you're in a track, it's one of those things that you notice while you're making it. And then you come back and you're like, oh, dude, man, bro, I was overreacting. Like, this is fine. So yeah, it's one of those things that when you're making it, it sounds like a big deal, but it's not a big deal. It's like, 
pizza. I don't know. When you make pizza and you're putting things in there and the tastes are so pointed out to you, but once you eat it as a whole pizza, it's like fine. Like mushrooms on pizza. Never mind. That was a bad analogy. So here we have five. And so it's going now. The It's very important that it starts on the top of the movement. We're going to make this patch, by the way. I'm just explaining it real quick. Some of the ideas. So it's important that it starts. Look at this. If you start over here, like somewhere weird, it sounds fine there. But when you put it with drums, it's not so fine no more. They're not. It's not friends with drums. See how it sounds like off? And so let me play it one more time. It just sounds off. So in order to fix this, you just move it over. Do, 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 do. And now it'll sound on. Much more on, at least. So that it lines up. Now, if you're going for syncopation, which I just did in my music theory series, I'm doing a music theory series. If you're going for syncopation, you know, that could be a neat trick to do. But he didn't do that. So I was like, all right, guess I ruled that one out. So right here, somewhere, like, somewhere in there. The, it's triplets, triplet, 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 triplet. So it's 112 in case you're wondering about that. If you don't know what triplets are, you should really look at my sound, uh, what is it, music theory series. So that's going on. There is some noise. I introduced the noise to give edge to the top of the filter movement. So as this thing's going up and down, the noise is brought in and out. And this color right here, I don't know why, they, it must not be technically a high pass filter or something, but it's essentially a high pass filter. And so this will add the top end and give us some more stuff to distort, helping us achieve the mess wave that he put in the microwave for 20 minutes. So I'm using the clipper and the sign shaper, just a result of trying out the different distortions, clipper, um, I don't know, that's just what I settled on. And the drive is up most of the way, and then I messed with the dry wet. This is largely responsible for that click. Man, maybe I'll just get rid of it. It sounds pretty darn close without it. So never mind, just get rid of the clipper. But if you want it, you get that. I think it sounds more aggressive. Maybe we could try, ooh, 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 ooh. maybe we could try fading it in that much using a longer envelope. But then it's, it's not really a morphing sound. This is a bad idea. Don't do that. Gosh, what are you thinking? Composing gloves? Don't do that. So anyways, I like it without it. So anyways, we move with the sign shaper, turn it on. That's where the drive is. Moving the drive makes a huge difference because the nature of the sign shaper, it's something that tends to add lower harmonics. So, so you get stuff like that. You notice how there was an increase in mid range there. So, I went with that without it. It sounds wimpy, so we don't want wimpy. And another important move was the classic tube. I was just kind of shocked at how important this one was. That's what it sounds like without it. it. Sounds like some child screaming in your ear. So, anyways, that's the classic tube. The EQ's on, you know, it's la la la. I didn't make too many adjustments, some high boost, some boosted whatever frequency this is. I see it says like 50. I don't know if that's 50 hertz or if that's like the 50th frequency, or I don't I don't know what to do with that. I don't know what that means. And I took down the low end, the low shelf. So, okay, that's that's what's going on here. So, let's go to post. Here's post. In post, I have this shape. I was attempting to get out, rid of that. I could probably get rid of this. Now. You can hear it though. It's kind of shocking how a little dip like that can make such a huge difference in an area where most of this the spectrum's over here anyways. But it's all, remember, when you're listening to and using EQ, it's all a comparative thing. So like the low end compared to the high end. So you could boost crap like I'm doing right here, or you could just take down the low end, and then by comparison, the high end will be louder. So it's all a mind game. And remember, this blows up on several levels with mastering, well, with mixing and then mastering, this comparison game becomes a lot more important. So I guess it's not more important, it's just important, so know about that. This, so that's the shape I settled on. I went into Maximus and I boosted the snot out of the high end as if, if high end has snot, I boosted it. Then the low end, it's got this tiny touch, probably not honestly that important. Don't even worry about it. The low end though, I was like, dude, man, bro, get that low end jazz out of here. So I'm compressing it and I'm not playing makeup game. And I believe I messed with where the high band lied. Maybe not. No, uh, it looks like it, will, like it normally does. At some point, I know I did. Because I tried doing this with FM, and that was an interesting mess. As I got some timbres that were really cool, but they weren't this. Then I went through and I distorted it. So even though I compressed the low end, it is being distorted back up. Without this, that's what it sounds like. Because the low end's not there. This this shoves the low end back up. So this, without the uh, compression, 
No. That's that's without the compression. My bad. That made no sense. So, okay. I, the compression is taking it down. So, the low end... It's kind of interesting. The low end dominates. That's the problem there. Listen to it. So, you can hear this amount of low end and the high end by comparison. So, I boosted the high end and cut the low end. And I got my timbre, which is much closer to this. And then the wave shaper... So without the wave shaper, with the wave shaper, you can see the low ends being brought back slightly. So you could. This is sort of a touchy curve. Touchy curves. That sounds. Um, anyways, so we have reverb, and the reverb. So if I really was going to use this in a track, I may consider doing stereo imaging. However, it's also a very bad idea in the respect that a sound like this, that has got such a strong rhythmical aspect, rhythmic, rhythmic aspect with such a specific frequency response. It's when you do that, you're going to introduce things where you'll get phase problems. So it might not be the best idea. So what would kind of be a cool idea is if you were to do side processing and add reverb on the side. So you get an appearance of a stereo image without sacrificing the clarity of the stereo image. If that makes any sense. I mean, it sort of sounds like a bit of nonsense, but it'd be something I'd probably experiment with. But anyways, I, you can't do that with this plugin. There has to be a side to process so there's no side so you have to do it on mid but just an interesting side note i was thinking about so the wet's very very low like the wet level the decay is you know i wanted it to be shorter but then you get this sort of that 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 thing at the end and i didn't like that i wanted it to ring out more this is a touchy i shouldn't have touched it it's too touchy so the low cut is up about 11 i believe 11, 12, 1205. So, you know, 1205 hertz. So that's that. That's this patch. Now, one other important move before I go on to making it is I messed with where the inserts lie. I was like, hey, do man, bro, this uh, this insert thing, let's let's try moving around. So it's important to note that insert one is the clip, which I just took out. If I add it, and like, yeah, yeah, I like it so much more without it. I don't even know why I had that on there in the first place. Here we have sign shaper, though. We can move around where the sign shaper lies in the chain. You notice it's after filter two. That's why it's important that filter two's thing is all the way up. And the mix is on one and two. So many people do not describe the routing in here with enough detail, I think. But filter one and two. So anyways, mix two. So this is essentially the thing that sends it to here. I It makes a difference, though. Because look at that versus that that's a big difference so you should be aware of that like where you put this in the chain matters It'd be interesting and without it you can notice there's a difference even though it sounds very similar just this inner i don't know it's an interesting deal it's a very small difference but i liked it I put that there just in case I want my hard clipper back. If we move this around. So I also turn my feedback off. It turns my feedback on, for, on by default. Massive does. It's just a thing it does. It's off all the way, but I turned it off just to be extra safe. So anyways, that's the sound. Let's make it, yeah? Let's, let's stop talking about all this extra junk. It's like, Mr. Gloves, come on. Let's get to making it. I'm like, okay, do that, bro. So, okay, here's massive, do to do I'm going to just, I believe I already did it, but I'll do it one more time. I'm going to copy the line and paste it, because I don't want to do it again. Cut that out. Oh, why didn't he use that? That's even, that's better. So, let's go to massive, and we're looking for this. So, it, you can tell, man, it sounds like he probably has a stereo image. Something, maybe the dimensional expander's on, because it doesn't sound like that. It's, I got it really close though. So, okay, let's go. Let's add the speech wave since I already discovered that I like the speech. It's like called soft speech or something. The screamer. Ooh, that's tempting. I bet he likes that one. It's a scream. It says scream. All right, fine. I'm going to add the sine wave first because I saw that one first. I like the sine triangle for no apparent reason. So, I'm going to turn it up a little bit. And this is going to be our fundamental. So, I'm going to make it two octaves lower. <coughs> We're doing a three octave gap. It's a pretty big gap. Speech, speech, speech. Looking for the speech. Let me know when you see the speech. Oh, you can't because it's a video on YouTube. Bummers. 
But man, I'm always digging through here. Gentle speech. There it is. It's a high. Ooh, look at that. It's got a fancy. It's a hybrid, like a Prius, digital hybrid, digital Prius. I don't know. I'm going to take the waveform down. This is just something I've discovered I liked. Let's sound it closer. And I'm going to take this one up an octave. Again, hold down Alt and drag, which I keep pushing spacebar. So there we go. Ooh. That's it. That's the sound. So we're going to make these filter one, filter one, serial relationship, do, do. And we're going to leave this again, leave that alone. And we have feedback. Going to turn it off just because I don't want it messing up my sound. So we're going to come over here to the scream filter, turn it, turn it up about halfway. This is it. Now the scream is feedback. When I, Now... Massive from the ground up was the first series I ever did. So I've learned a ton since then, like a ton. So I didn't completely understand exactly what I was messing with. Like in the, the level of what I know about what I'm doing now is like so much bigger. But anyways, the resonance is going to be controlled where the cutoff is. And this is going to move with the cutoff. So if you want a big wah -la 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 thingy like this, well, first that's like this. So go to your LFO, move it over just so we can deal with that sync problem I talked about earlier. Turn the sync on and we'll just make it 12 since we already know. And make sure that your curve, it's using this curve. If you do in the middle, it's going to more like do a midway curve thing. It just mix between them. Not cool, bro, dude. You don't want that. So we're going to put that on the cutoff and take the cutoff down. So if we turn our resonance up, it like moves around. And right now that's fine. But later when we add more screen, and we add the distortion, it's gonna be something we really don't want. We want it just a little, just a little bit of resonance. Resonance is a boost in where the cutoff is. So this cutoff is saying the filter is like going through your EQ going woo doo 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 doo, and you want it to, there's like a boost that follows it around. And we don't want that. We want it to be just a tiny boost, just a little one, itty bitty boost, which is what we're doing. It gives help for the scream because the scream is a feedback. I believe it's an IIR filter. I, I know I don't know that much about IIR filters, so I should probably stop talking there i mean i've studied the math behind how you would program them but to me if, it, if it's got feedback it's got to have an irr where you could just specify the amount of samples that go into it but i don't know maybe that's a little too much so okay i'm putting this one here just right off the bat because i if we turn this let's turn this let's mute it so you can see that's much tighter than up here because it's got to go farther so i'm using this this to make it more tight on the sub subsequent ones. We have our big attack and then a tight, a tighter movement on the following ones. Just a more organic sound, sort of a small detail, not, not totally necessary, but do so unmute. I believe there's like a keyboard shortcut. Is it Alt? It is Alt. You hold down Alt and click. Okay, so that's that. Now we've got our thingy set up here. Now we need to move over to the land of distortion. So I'm gonna come over here and. I'm just gonna add in the sign shaper because I decided I didn't like that other one at all. Now that sounds kind of corny. This is another reason why getting into sounds like this is kind of hard, but believe me, we're going places. So that's good. We're gonna mess with the routing of it real quick. Now I settled on here, so I'm gonna be a little biased to that here, but in reality, I come back and move this around a bunch. Now, of course, the classic too, because I don't know why, but it's such a really important distortion. It's the uh, important distortion element. So, okay, now we're gonna add some bright noise. I like bright noise because it's, well, it's just a noise with a steep cutoff, and I'm gonna high pass it all the way and just add a little bit. Without noise, with noise. So you can see we have that a little extra bright timbre at the top. Bright timbre. You look at me. We got high frequencies at the top. Let's be more specific here. So, okay. So that's what we got going here. We could try mixing these two differently. You could sort of get a feel for whatever he settled on. The fundamental is pretty darn loud, but there's also a hole in the mix right here. You can see over here, we've got like a kick or snare. It's sort of covering up there. Here, oh, here's a kick. It looks like a that looks like a big fat kick or a sub or something. I'm not gonna push pay push play, so I don't know. Anyways, we're pretty cl close to there. I'm not gonna mess with any of these inside settings. Not super necessary. We could come in here on the EQ, add some high end, duck the low, and then I did this weird thing in the middle, trying to. This is a peaking filter, basically. 
That's okay. So, okay, let's go in and now let's do the magic of post processing. Whoa. Whoa, dude, bro, dude, man, bro. Oh, I shrank it. That's what's going on. Okay. Here we go. Master three. Do, 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 do. Let's go to an EQ. Now, my fundamental, I had it stronger than the other one. So, let's turn up the volume on this a little bit. We can try messing with feedback. No, feedback side didn't click. And I rediscovered we don't like that. Okay, so we have that. Let's go into EQ. Now remember, EQ is a game of comparison. If we reduct the low end, the high end will be higher by comparison. So I don't necessarily need to be boosting like this, but I'm going to, because I can. But when he mixed and mastered it, a lot of the reasons he has the sound he does is because that applies on multiple levels. How you compare it here is going to play a role in how you compare it later on to other tracks. And then when you mix, well, the full mix is the track comparison. And then you get to the master level. And then after that, you're done. So you want to be careful about how you set it up. Because if I boost the style out of here, I'm not going to have that much room to compare later on without having to take that down anyways. So... <laughs> Okay, so let's do some some combo pression with the maximizer maximus, and I'm gonna boost the high end and some of the. Well, oh man, okay, this mid range will be. I, I like it. I like it. I like it. I'm gonna settle on that. All right, so that's pretty much the compression setting. Let's move on to distortion. So we're gonna add some wave shaper. Now, I know I brought down the low end, but it will come back again, as I talked about earlier. So that's pretty close. And then finally, let's add a little bit of reverb. Reverberation nation. Here we go. Bring the wet down. Bring the, I leave the K where it's at. Bring the low cut up. Probably mess with the reverb. I might automate it to go with it as far as the volume is so that only when it's playing do you get the reverb. There's a cool way to do that inside massive, but I'm not going to bother with it. So I'm a little off. At least you know, you've seen the steps though. See that resonance right there? That made a big difference. Come into Maximus. I'm just going through sort of fine tuning crap, finding stuff that I would like to change. Let's mess with the waveform. That sounds more accurate. You don't generally want to be turning volume up just in general, but I had to. I had to see what it would happen. Okay, so this is what we got at the end. That sounds not as spot on as my other one. Let's let's see. Yeah, this one. Let's uh, let's change the wave one more. Yeah, let's go. Let's try out some different waveforms.
I settled on distro on the other one, so try that one out. That sounds much... Sounds much more in the ballpark of what I was going for. So, okay, there we go. Now, there's still, there's additional things. You can keep messing with this and get it to the point where it's really a dynamic sound that you want. Let's try adding that dimensional expander thing. See how that goes. With a much smaller size. Nah, that's just a bad idea. Don't do it. Okay. <laughs> Let's try it. The fundamental, I feel like, be brought up more. It'd be interesting to switch these. Make this 12, 20, ooh, 12. This one 24. That's farther away, but it was an interesting. Oh, it's, uh, as you can see, that's a bit, well, there you go, that's a big difference. Um, we could try adding feedback a little. It's kind of an interesting deal. And also, modulation phase could be interesting as well. It's a very, very, very limited modulation oscillator. It's essentially just used for timbre changes. And it's only really useful if you really know FM. So, Go check out my Learn FM synthesis if you're curious. And I have a video in the Citrus series on ring modulation and how it works. So you can go check that one out too. But that that sounds like he used that. Maybe. So yeah. If you have any questions about this, let me know. Subscribe and have a blessed day. I've heard the good deeds and the day that I changed my